In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can raise more than $2,000 for your school in three hours. So often in schools these days, we are forced to raise money for things. If we want to do a fun project, if we want to take our kids somewhere, if we want to purchase something for our classroom, the money's not there. It's just not. Schools' budgets are so tight and they're trying so hard to keep teachers in the classroom and keep class sizes smaller so they don't have money for things that maybe schools used to have money for. So we're forced to do fundraisers and kids are selling things like pizzas and popcorn. Kids are selling candles and chocolate and coffee, all kinds of different things. And the one thing that these fundraisers all have in common is everyone hates them. The parents hate them. The kids hate them. The people, family members hate them. The community hates them. No one likes these fundraisers. Thankfully, most people understand that we're just schools trying to raise money so our kids can do cool things. But what if there was a way that you could raise money for your school, $2,000 in three hours, and everyone loves the fundraiser? Sure. Probably thinking, yeah, right. All fundraisers are awful. Nobody wants to do this fundraiser. You're just going to be getting people to give you money because they feel bad for you. But no, this fundraiser is amazing. It is a win, 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 win. So this magical fundraiser where at our school we are able to raise $2,000 in three hours, almost monthly, is a lock-in. So for three hours after school, either from right when school gets out from 3.30 to 6.30, or we have the kids come back from 5.30 to 8.30. During a lock-in, we open up our entire school. We have different things happening in different places. So kids can go to the gym and shoot baskets or climb our rock wall. Kids can go to the cafeteria, and in the cafeteria they can sing karaoke. You haven't lived until you've seen kindergartners sing karaoke at your school. It is marvelous. Uh, we have craft rooms where teachers have crafts set up and kids are building crafts. We have movie rooms. The last lock-in, I ran a movie room. So basically, I had three hours in my classroom where I got to work in my classroom, get things done, hang out with students while they just watched a movie and ate snacks. It was amazing. We also have a Lego room where kids are building with Legos. The library is set up with all of the computers are out and kids are playing Minecraft. In the past, we've had things like a Wii, Wii room, like the Nintendo Wii, and kids are playing all the different sport games on the Wii U, all kinds of different things. Teachers can, if teachers wanna try something new, they can do that in a room. Sometimes they will have like our technology teacher, she'll have like the Ozobots or the Osmos or, or different technology tools out that the kids have learned about that they can create with and have fun with. The lock-in costs $10 per student. For that $10, the kids can do all of those fun activities for three hours. We'll take care of your kids, we'll watch them. You can have a run of the school, they can hang out with their friends. Uh, we also sell pop, pizza, and candy. All of that is $1, water to $1, make it nice and simple and easy. Uh, so we're making a lot of money, between $10 and $15 for every kid that comes to the lock-in and it's all profit. Like we are bringing in all of that money is coming right back and directly to students. None of that money is getting being paid to the fundraising company or the chocolate company or the popcorn company. None of that. All of the money that is being spent is going right back into directly impacting students. So we're going to head down to Miss Haney, my principal's office, and we're going to talk to her about how some of this lock and money has been used to uh, benefit the students of Parma. Okay, friends, I'm here with my wonderful principal, Ms. Haney. Uh, could you give people some tips to run a successful lock-in? Um, I think so. So first of all, I think making sure that you have students sign up, send home forms, and communicate with parents ahead of time about when lock-in is going to be. Send those forms home so that they get registered so that you have an idea of how many kids will be there. Um, Another important tip is to make sure you have people at every station. So have someone at your front door so that if a parent comes early to pick a child up, you need an adult who knows the kids and the parents at that front door. Another tip would be to 
put out early enough to your staff if your staff is going to help run those lock-ins, which we're fortunate enough here that our staff volunteers. Um, we put out a Google Doc and our teachers sign up or staff members sign up to run a room or to be assigned an area of the building for lock-in. Another important thing is to make sure that you have a variety of activities and honestly let it be um, free-flowing and fun. I've heard that some schools have tried to structure it and they run a time and then the kids have to rotate at a certain time. The kids aren't, they don't like that. Our kids are able to come and go from room to room and activity to activity and I think that's what makes it successful and what allows them to just have fun and, and be free and but yet it's organized and that again we have people stationed throughout our building so that it stays in control and the kids are having safe fun. Um, and our teachers enjoy that time with our kids. Okay, so we have these lock-ins. We have these teachers volunteering. We have kids having the time of their life. And we are making approximately $2,000 each time we run a lock-in. What are some ways that we have used the money to support what we're doing? So here's the thing. I think there are, as anyone in education knows, there are so many needs that we just don't have a slush fund at an elementary school. We don't have a vending machine or pop machine. We don't have any way to make money. So as far as a, for our budget, we have specific budget items and specific budgets, but there's no extra slush fund. So that's what our lock-ins have provided. Um, for example, we have, um, I feel, done a great job of building our classroom libraries. We have purchased a lot of books with um, lock-in money. We purchased from new lockers this year. We have some a new bay of lockers. I had no budget for lockers. We needed lockers. We put lockers in. My Our PE teacher was sweltering hot this last spring. <laughs> We bought him a new ceiling fan for the gym and had that installed and probably one lock-in paid for that. Um, but it's just those kind of items that unfortunately we don't have a budget for. Um, extra professional development, I believe very much in professional development and making sure our teachers are, are getting what they need as far as their um, willingness and need to grow and continue learning. RPD budget doesn't cover everything that we do, unfortunately, so in order to allow teachers to do things that we've done like this year with Math Academy um, or workshops, sometimes that money from our lock-ins helps cover those kinds of things. So basically, when my budget is empty, which it pretty often early on. is pretty early, <laughs> um, lock-in helps supplement those things. Our parents, I it's one of the things I love about lock-in. I think it's a win-win. It is, they see it as a service to them. Um, for example, in December, we promote it as a shopping night. So let us keep the kids while you um, go shopping. We always do one right around Valentine's Day in February so that we call, you know, we advertise that one for a date night for parents. Um, but I think even the ones that are run right after school for parents who don't get out of work, they're not paying for daycare. We keep the kids after school. They don't have to pick them up till 6.30 at night. So our parents absolutely love it. We feed them dinner. We have pizza and, and drinks and pop and candy and chips, and the kids can purchase those kinds of things. So we have them here. They know it's safe. They know it's fun. We send them home worn out and exhausted, and we've had them here for three hours. But our kids just come and go. They may sit in a movie room, as you know, because I think you... Mr. Sharp volunteered to run the movie room in That's December. Amazing. Yeah, he got a lot done. So if they're in a movie room, they, they might come and eat their pizza and stay in there for 10 minutes, and then they might move on. They might go do karaoke or go play a game, and when they're done with their game, they might move into the Minecraft room or the craft room, and they just get to come and go, and they love that. Look around, look around, what do you see? Books, books. Are you ready to read? Gather around, gather around, what do you hear? Open up your ear. I'll read to you, you, ooh, you'll sing to me, me, me. Thanks a lot for watching. It means the world to me. If you found any value in this video at all, I suggest you hit that subscribe button. There's a little bell. Click on that. Then you'll get an email anytime I have a new video. And we can continue to learn together, grow together, become better teachers of reading, writing, and getting kids excited about learning. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.